is with us in mind, comrades, it's a great privilege to introduce our next speaker here today, who has travelled from Jerusalem to be with us this weekend. A lifelong Palestinian activist who has also been a great supporter of our own struggle for freedom here in Ireland. Would you please give a big bullet bus for Dr. Afif Safay, Fatah's Deputy Commissioner for International Relations. Dear friends, I started the day by visiting the murals in Belfast, a very moving experience, powerful messages, and one of the paintings was about the victims of the Gaza massacres. It showed a person in a wheelchair and it said, they took his land, then they took his legs, then they took his life. Friends. I would like to express our political gratitude to Ireland and the people of Ireland because you were among the first to hear our cry for freedom out of captivity and bondage. We, the Palestinian people, we have been the victims of the victims of European history. And as a result, we never got our legitimate share of understanding, sympathy, and solidarity but not in Ireland. You heard our cry for freedom, and to that I want to express our full gratitude. <laughs> you know, those who chose to be our enemies have mobilized against us God, the Bible, Hitler, the Holocaust, and Hollywood. Believe you me, that's a tough challenge. I am against historical denials. The Holocaust denial is a very obnoxious and horrible, abominable thing. <laughs> and I want to remind you that we, the Palestinian people, have suffered three successive denials. First came the denial of our mere physical existence. Those who wanted to colonize our country pretended that Palestine was a land without a people, for a people without a land. Our mere physical existence was denied. Then we were, as you know, denied our national and individual rights, and we were collectively uprooted and expedited to the periphery of our homeland. And third, and this is worse, up to today, we are being denied the recognition of the historical injustice that was inflicted on us, the recognition of our sufferings, and how often, dear friends, we the Palestinians, have to hear our suffering being trivialized and banalized. Dear friends, we engaged in a peace process in good faith, and I was one of the architects of that principled pragmatism that we have adopted. But I will not concede from you doing a soul-searching exercise 25 years after the beginning of the peace process. One has to admit today that during the theoretical years of peacemaking, what we have witnessed was not the withdrawal of occupation, but the expansion of occupation through the elastic growth of the colonizing process in the occupied territories. The constant Israeli policy, and I'm happy to hear the indignation that you have expressed at the beginning of this session. The Israeli constant policy, left, right, and center, is how to acquire as much of Palestinian geography with as little of Palestinian demography as possible. I will not concede from you, we have been unreasonably reasonable. And like the Irish people, we have had to have a soul-searching exercise some decades ago about the different layers of the desirable, the possible, and the acceptable. And we were unreasonably reasonable. We no more asked for absolute justice. We only asked for possible justice. And let me convey a message to Jewish communities around the world. We in Palestine, Israel, are in a situation of unavoidable coexistence. And I would like to them 
the Jewish communities around the world and Israeli society to know that if a Palestinian state is our right, it is their duty and their moral obligation because they, more than anybody else, know the price that we have had to pay individually and collectively. <laughs> Dear friends, the moral dilemma, the political challenge in the Middle East today is the following. We either have one people too many this time we, the Palestinians, or we have a state which is missing and needs to be created. The response of the international community in the UN and elsewhere has been that there is a state missing and needs to be created. But I have news for you. History is still undecided. And let me tell you, I do not belong to the optimistic school of thought that believes in predetermination and that uh, the oppressed will be inevitably victorious one day. No, unfortunately, my friends, history is a cemetery of oppressed people who remained oppressed until they vanished into historical oblivion. And our obsession with the Palestinians is that we don't want to be the American natives, the red Indian of cowboy films that vanish into historical oblivion as a society, a nation, and a culture. And let me tell you, I appeal to you, to Ireland, the state, the public opinion, the society, to help history make the right choice. And let me tell you, in the bleakest of moments, and we are now in a very depressing moment in our history, I want to tell you that we remain confident and determined that Palestine will one day soon resurrect. And as you know, we in Jerusalem and we in Palestine, we have had some previous experience in resurrection. <laughs> Sinn Féin, Goanna Nis, Carta Agus Ian Tosna Heron, Equality, Rights and Irish Unity.